Hello and welcome to this Minecraft tutorial with me, Groover. Now today I have for you my mean green moss making machine, which you can see in action right behind me. You can see the moss is coming flying up the wall there. What it's going to do is it's going to create a big old cube of moss so you can do whatever you want with. You can either mine it by hand or you can have it going into some kind of gas blaster. Whatever you like, gas blaster, wither blaster, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, TNT, it's all good. Moss is practically insta mine anyway, so breaking it by hand is no big deal. But you can see it all in action over here. It's pushing all of the items, all of the extra mossy bits up to the front here. We're collecting those up as well. Personally, I'm going to hook that straight up to composter because I don't want all of that. It produces a ridiculous quantity of just items. All of the carpet, all of the azalea, whatever they're called. Um, and then you just got the rest of the machine over here. Now, some of you will look at that and go, you know what, I can make that. But for the rest of you, here, can, here comes a tutorial. Right, these are the items that you're going to need for this build. Obviously, you're going to need a lot of bone meal. And you're going to need all of this. So, yeah, there's nothing really much to say. These are the items you're going to need. Some of these are design choices. You'll find that you'll be able to swap some of the things out yourself. But if you just want to build it and follow the tutorial, Go ahead and collect all of these items together. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you've got a bit of space around you. You're going to need around about 24 blocks in one direction, 12 across, and then about 15 up. So I'm going to start building mine a little bit off the ground, just so I've got some space below me, so that I can work underneath and above this. You can sort of dip this into the ground, whatever you like. So first things first, we're going to place seven sticky pistons facing straight up. And then on the back of that down here, we're just going to place on some solid blocks coming out and then it comes out by one extra block. On top of those, we're going to place on the redstone. The only reason we do that right now is because it's going to make placing these pistons just that little bit easier, he says. Hmm? There we go. And then you can come around the back here and on the back of those pistons, you place it on solid blocks and it's going to come out by two blocks extra. And then we're going to do that, okay? And then we're going to put redstone, redstone, miss one, and then redstone all the way along here. And the place where we missed one, we're going to put a repeater on full delay. Next, we're going to come out by two blocks, temporary, temporary blocks there. And then we're going to face a observer coming straight back in, okay? So what's going to happen here is that a block which is positioned there is going to get grabbed and then pushed in that direction. So I break that and you can see it working perfectly. Next, I'm going to take some glass and just build a little T-junction like this, or a little cross on the end, and I'm gonna do the same over here. This is just gonna make sure that um, everything stays within the machine rather than falling out. It's gonna be a lot of liquids around here. Now, next up is, we're going to place in some temporary blocks across here. Doesn't matter what they are, we're gonna break them later. And then on the top of that, we're going to place pistons facing this way in that formation. Then stairs facing this direction. Okay. Next up is solid blocks across all of those. And then I'm going to place in a repeater right there with a temporary... Well, these aren't temporary. We're going to leave these here for later with a temporary torch. Okay. So that's going to make sure that when we put redstone on these, all of the pistons extend, which is going to mean that all the water is going to flow in that direction. Okay. Right, next we're going to waterlog all of these blocks. So we've got all of the stairs, all the pistons right there need to be waterlogged. Then we're going to grab our hopper, I guess, or whatever block it is that you're using, and place a run across there, which is just going to contain everything. Then here, second from the end on each side, one block like that. And then we're going to fill these in just like that. Next is to place the lava on top of there. See this? This is going to create smooth stone. And then lava on top of there. So the reason that we've got this set back and rather than just straight across the top is because occasionally in the building of this, mistakes get made. And timings aren't quite right as they're going to be once the redstone clock's all in place and things go wrong and basically cobble or something will push up through here which we don't particularly want it to delete our lava 
which is why I've set it back just a little bit safely. Once this is all running, this one's been running for hours. Never had a problem. So once it's all running, it's absolutely fine. Right, now that we've done that, we're going to set up our clock down here. So we're going to come out here by two. These are kind of temporary blocks. And then we're going to build that out. So we can take those three away again or leave them in. Whatever you so like. It doesn't really matter. That's the formation that we're going to have right there. Next, we're going to place on repeaters like this. So three facing that way, three facing this way. And we're going to put all those on full delay. Then we're going to place a block right there, which means that we can take that one away. And a piece of redstone right there. I'm going to place a torch on top of that. And then we're going to place on a little thing just like that right there. Okay. Then we're going to have redstone dust, redstone dust, redstone dust, redstone dust. And then we're going to have a comparator facing that way and a comparator facing that way. This is our DK clock. Okay. So this is going to make sure that when the water is pushing out in that direction, it's only pushing for exactly the amount of time that we need. Now, next, I can place that there and then replace that. Okay. So this is more or less the time is all organized. Next, I'm going to place a lever right there. And then the final piece of this is a torch. Okay. Now, because I've turned that torch on, it's locked that I've turned the lever on to lock that torch into position. And as you can see, it's already pushed out one row of stone straight away. Now, next up is we're just going to run this for seven blocks in this direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to do the same here. And that's just going to make sure that the water is contained. Now, because I want this to... Well, look, we'll, get, we'll run this for a few moments and we're going to let it break temporarily. So what I want it to do is I want it to produce a whole load of stone. See, I knew it was going to break exactly like that. And you see what's happened here? It's pushed up some stone into this area and that is blocking off the lava. So we're going to turn it off. We're going to break those. I'm going to even up this area so that it's all at the same length. Now the idea is that if we fill this out to here, then the thing that broke it just then will never happen again because the water will always, 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 always try to flow in this direction rather than this direction. If that makes any sense? You'll maybe see in a moment. Anyway, I'm going to turn that back on. Right, it's going to stop in a second. Round about this one, I think. There we go. So that's <laughs> it's going to break again. But this is fine. This is fine. This is why we placed the lava where we did. This is just going to make measuring these things out much easier for us. So I'm going to break this and we're going to see where this all runs to. Okay, so this is where it stops. So from here, we're going to place blocks right there. And then on the face of those blocks, we're going to place pistons. And then underneath here, we break off that end row. And then we're going to come down and have pistons facing up like this. All the way across. So literally what we've done just there is, because I went a little bit quickly, you let the water flow by breaking that piece of redstone. It flows up to the end here and you want to leave one block clear and then you place down your solid blocks and then you place down pistons. And then underneath you want your pistons facing straight up right here. So if you've got all of that, just like that, I'm going to place in an observer right there with a solid block on the back of it. And then I'm going to go down by two, break that and then just come all the way across to the end of the pistons here. Okay. Then I need to get myself some redstone back in the hand. And we're going to place redstone directly onto all of this. Okay. So that's going to make sure that when this pushes forward, that fires. 
so it pushes forward, pushes up. Yeah? Now, next up is, we can do this one of two ways, but basically I'm going to show you the way which I prefer, because it gives us something to place the distance on, and it gives us some simple kind of way of working forward. So, we're going to go like that. So I've placed down the redstone on the lower layer, which is going to make placing the next layer of solid blocks much more easy. And then because we've got something to place against, we can reasonably easily place pistons. Now that's three layers. We're going to go up by 12 altogether. And then on the back side, we're going to do that. I've tried to show you a way which would be easier in survival. Obviously, if you're able to just fly left and right like I am in creative, then this is the easier way. And then we're going to cover all of those in redstone. So this is what you should now have. Everything exactly like that goes up by 12, so it's 12 high pistons. And we've got redstone on all of these levels exactly like that. Now, next up is we're going to place in buttons like this on the back of these. These are purely to stop any carpets growing. And then we're going to place in, this is going to be the slightly difficult one. There, just like that. So you want to aim for the top of the button and then shift click to place trapdoors. Now, these trapdoors are going to stop any carpets from growing here. And the carpet is basically going to stop items from flowing forward. We want to get all of the items to flow forward so we can collect them and then do whatever we want with them. Next up is we want to make sure that this is going to fire when there is a block right there. So we're going to take solid block, we're going to place a sticky piston just like that and we're going to put a solid block on its face. Now, we're going to come across like this by two. And we're going to place in a repeater and a lever or a torch just something to power and this can push it in in fact this one you can even get away with a piece of redstone it doesn't matter because you'll see if i place something there it powers this now next up is we're going to come out by two blocks but we're going to need glass for the first block so just glass like that and then the second one, it doesn't really matter what that is. Solid block, it doesn't really matter. This one has to be a repeater. And we're going to put the lever there as well and power that. Now you see that? That powered through that block down into this run of redstone, which made this push out. This is partially working now. Now we need to get that signal to flow all the way down to the bomb. So we're just going to place glass like this. just out there like that then we're going to run redstone onto that one and then a solid block there with redstone on and then a repeater facing inwards now I'm, I'm just going to build that out like that so you can see that the power is now making its way down then we just need to repeat that a couple more times In fact, we don't need that one. We just need this one. We get power onto that one and then repeat a face in that way. And now what we've got to do is get that bottom row powered, which is quite easy in a way. We take our glass, go up like that. We have redstone on there. And then we have a repeater facing like that. So the entire wall is all pushed out. And it's going to push at pretty much exactly the same time. Okay. So now that you've got this, this is like most of the machine build. We've only got a couple of modules to put in place. Um, we want to make sure that this is definitely, definitely working. There's no point in getting all the way through a build and finding that it's not working. So we're going to put our redstone back that we broke, that we we're testing the distance of the water. And then we're going to turn it on. Now, what we're looking for is that this is going to get all the way out to the end. Oh, it's broken. Yeah. This is because it hasn't got started properly yet. So at this point, I've turned it off. I'm going to break these. It's because I made it push to the push limit. Wait for the lava to do that, blow out over everything, and then we turn it back on. And then we just watch and wait. Now you see this, it's going to push this up and what we want to make sure is that when it gets to the top all the way up there, that it's going to push out as well. 
and it absolutely should. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. Right, there we go. It is fully working. Right, we're pretty much on the home run now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to look at the back of that cell and we're going to count out four blocks. And on the fourth block, we're going to have an observer facing exactly like that. I'm going to do the same there. And then we can take those blocks away. Next up is we're going to place our dispenser facing up like that. Whoops. And then we're going to place on top of the dispenser the moss directly. Now, next, we want to come around the back, and on the back of the dispenser, we're going to place in torches facing up like that, and then facing into the torches, another observer each. And then facing onto that, we're going to have pistons like that. Now, this is going to make sure that every time that this pushes, that the moss is going to get mossified, it's going to turn this into moss. So, let's put in some bone meal into there. And that is our machine basically ready to roll. That is it. We need to put in a little bit of collection, but we'll do that in a moment. I'm just going to fill in these sides to make sure that nothing falls out accidentally. And then we're going to turn that on. Now, you're probably going to have a fair bit of stone to deal with initially. Maybe a little bit of cobble, depending on how it all broke down and all that kind of thing. But that is it. It's running. And what might happen occasionally, rarely, this one's been very, very good. This layout seems to be very, very consistent. Um, occasionally you might get like a piece of stone in the moss. But by having the two of these here, it tends to be extremely good. Now, what we've got to do with next is all of these drops that you're getting. So we're going to just turn it back off for a moment or two. I'm going to give it a second. I don't want to turn it off in the middle of a cycle. It's likely to cause a problem. There we go. As long as if you can see all the way down there, then there's no problems when you've turned it off. Once it's up and running, it's not going to be a problem. It's just when you turn it off occasionally. So we're going to go underneath here. We're going to go down by two. I'm going to run this all the way across to there. Okay, so this is the entire width. This is the middle block of the seven. We're going to replace that with a redstone block. There are many, many other ways of doing this, but this is the way that I, I quite like. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to place a solid block up there. We're going to get our golden rails. Oh, they're already there. Amazing. I don't need redstone blocks anymore. And we're just going to run that all the way over there. Next, we're going to take a piece of honey, and we're going to place that right there, like that, okay? Now, next up, we're going to need some hoppers to actually do this collection. So, one of those, and we're going to need some of those, and we're going to need some normal rails as well. This is to make sure that needs to keep up there's a lot of drops up here so you see we only had that on for a few seconds there are a lot a lot of drops up there we need to make sure that we can collect all of them so i'm going to place i need a chest chest please yes please we're going to place our double chest like this so a temporary block right there double chest and then into the back of that double chest we're going to place in our hoppers now, I'm going to have to break that chest temporarily, um, and we're going to put it back. But the reason that I had to break it temporarily is because we need to put in the hopper minecart. Now, you see what's happened there? It's linked up. You might have to break this and replace it. It doesn't matter. At the moment, all that you want to do is place your minecart there. We're going to break that one and break that one and then break that one. Leave this one till last. And then we're just going to push that gently in into position and break those now because it stood on top of the hoppers right there we go that is over the two hoppers and then we can place our chests back there we go and then finally we can put a hopper minecart there and it's going to collect all of the stuff and empty super quickly so that's what we really really need we really need an extremely quick unloader so you can see those items are getting all collected up. 
really quite fast. If you find that this isn't enough, if you're having trouble with that and you want to collect more items at the same time, then you can have the same system at the other end. So you can have honey up there instead and have your two hoppers to do the collection. So that is all of the collection sorted. Now, finally, 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 you want to make sure that this is not going to just break. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a overflow control so that you can turn this on and it'll switch itself off once it's all done. So we're going to grab ourselves some glass and we're going to place out some temporary blocks. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And then we're going to come down by two and break all of those that we just put in. <laughs> okay. Then on here, we're going to get ourselves our torch. That's going to go like that. And then on the side of the torch, right in this direction, we're going to place glass like that. I'm going to make that glass connect up to this. So we kind of want to match it all up. I'm going to do it like that, because I can't. Okay, now I'm going to place a temporary block on top of there so that I can measure out how much redstone I need. So I want the redstone to reach all the way back to there, which means that I need a repeater right here. Now personally, I quite like doing this, and this is just going to save like some tiny scraps of redstone, but every single bit of redstone helps. So that is making sure that the signal reaches all the way back to here and powers this. If it powers this, it's going to turn the machine off. Now if I do that and then turn the machine back on, I can basically AFK at this thing and it will stop once the block makes its way all the way out to here. Once it's made its way all the way out to there, it's going to get powered and it's going to turn everything off, which is going to be perfect. As you can see as well down here, some of the items are gathering up on the glass, so it's up to you really, but I'm going to double up that plate of the glass just to make sure that I'm not losing any of those items. They're all going to make the way forward reasonably quickly, and uh, yeah, we shouldn't end up with an overflow there. Quick look. Yeah, the hopper minecart's keeping up perfectly with it all. So this collection system is super fast, nice and efficient, and then we can just wait. I'm just going to wait until this has made its way all the way over there. And this is why it's worth testing these things. So I actually placed that just a fraction too low for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this up by one. So I'm going to temporarily move this to there. Should make sure that everything's turned off. And then we move that up by one. And then we move that up by one. Just like that. Okay. And then we can take that away. And then we can take that away. And that should be all working again. Now we just need to make sure that we haven't caused any problems there. Yeah, that's all turned off properly. That's all fine. So that is your moss block. Ready to be mined. Now, I think, as you know, it's not quite insta-mine in Game Mode 1, so Game Mode 0. But it's pretty darn close. So, if you really feel like it, you can get yourself a nice hoe. And um, they, that can help you out as well. Just makes it a bit faster. Anything from stone upwards is insta-mine. And let's not forget, you've also got all of this goodness down here. The one thing that you're going to have to do is sort of keep an eye on the bone meal situation. So that's really full at the moment. It's, I mean, what's it used? It's used just short of two stacks, four stacks altogether, let's say. Yeah, just short of four stacks to do that entire lump, which isn't too bad. That's like a stack of bones in a bit. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful, and I hope that you're getting all of your moss needs fulfilled. I know that I am. I've got more moss than I could need ever now. Um, it's quite nice to compost as well. You almost get back um, more, almost get back more um, bone meal than you do compost. So, 
bow mill didn't do big costs. You know, positive stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do leave a like. If you want to see some more, drop me a subscribe. And I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.